2016 Armada Canadian National Champion. And those of you who also uh, follow our X-Wing content, he is uh, the he's the creator of the Rush Hour X-Wing Squad, the TIE Bomber Swarm that's uh, been featured so many times on our channel. Uh, so Christian is a is a dedicated Imperial player, to see the least. And so he's brought today a variation of his uh, winning, his uh, Canadian national winning list, which is a just a maximum squadron ball backed up by Victory Star Destroyer and Demolisher. He's running Admiral Sloan, of course, which is the, uh, the most popular Imperial commander for squadron heavy fleets. And... Uh, Opposite of him is Troy. Troy is a one of the newer uh, members of our Toronto Armada scene, and uh, he's actually the one that's uh, graciously donated the uh, playmat that you see on the screen today for us to use. And he's playing uh, what might possibly be the last hurrah of this list uh, post Wave Seven, and it is a Mon Mothma MC30 torpedo frigate. Uh, MSU list and so it's uh, just designed to dive into into the middle of Christian's ships and take out as many as possible and while um, well before before Christian's uh, TIE fighters can take out any of his ships now the thing about Mon Mothma is that uh, Mon Mothma's defense tokens is the evade tokens on the MC-30s because of Mon Mothma They'll work at close range, which actually means that um, his defense tokens are all of his defense tokens on his MC30s are actually relevant against uh, bombing runs by the Sloan squadrons. So uh, that's actually going to be a bit of an advantage for Troy here. Yeah, so Troy is uh, first player, and so he's decided to pick the most wanted objective from the list of Christian's uh, objectives. So we're going to be bringing up on the screen momentarily, but most wanted is a red uh, objective, and so the second player, after deploying fleets, gets to choose a ship of the opponent's and a ship of theirs, and uh, each of those ships are worth uh, double their points at the end of the at the end of the game if they get destroyed. So that's a fairly good. Uh, I mean, most wanted generally is the kind of list, uh, kind of objective that you'd want to avoid in most scenarios, especially if you have a ship that is big and slow and is a huge obvious target. But for Troy's list, I mean, you have hit, hit, three of his biggest ships are all the same. They're the MC-30s, and because because they're um, they're backed by Mon Mothma, they're actually fairly tanky. So they're they're all equally hard to kill. And they're fairly maneuverable because they're MC-30s. And that's why, for Troy at least, it's a, it's a fairly good objective for him to choose. And, of course, MC-30s benefit from being first player just because the torpedo frigates in particular uh, really want to be able to activate first to take advantage of that close-range black dice. It's gonna be the last hurrah for uh, what the pre-race wave seven meta. Yeah, so I mean, I think a lot of the Toronto people have been talking about uh, what list composition is gonna look like post wave seven, and definitely seeing a lot more large ships on the table because uh, a lot of the really powerful upgrades that have been previewed so far, things like strategic advisor, um, governor price, and bail organa, those all are require you to play at the very least uh, medium ships I think it is for Bail Organa and Governor Price and then Strategic Advisor only goes on large ships. So strate Strategic Advisor is probably the the card that the most people are excited for. Um, I think most of you know what it is already but for those of you who don't it's a officer upgrade. Uh, you can only put it on a large ship. It's unique and is not faction specific and the text on the card says uh, if you would activate, you may instead choose to exhaust this upgrade card and the activation goes back to your opponent. So the, the uh, effect 
uh, of that upgrade card is, is that it gives you an extra activation as a large ship. And that's one of the things that large ship lists have been deficient in because MSU lists, multi-small unit lists, can um, they just spam a bunch of small ships, which gives them a bunch of activation advantage, which allows them to... Um, which allows them to basically outweigh a lot of uh, lists with larger ships on them. And positioning is huge in this game, as those of you who play know this. So being able to wait out your opponent's activation, see where their ship moves, uh, stay out of range of their guns perhaps, and then move in to favorable arcs and fire on the next turn is a very powerful move. And Strategic Advisor, Strategic Advisor takes back some of that activation advantage back towards lists that have larger ships. So uh, Troy starts with a GR-75. I believe that is the GR-75 with the jamming field on it. I'm going to have to double check that. So that's a, that's his GR-75 that he's probably going to keep his squadrons around. You take a look at his squadron composition, which is two A-wings, two generic A-wings and two YT-1300s. Uh, both of them have counter, and the uh, YT-1300s have escort as well. So. I guess the idea is to keep them uh, close to the jamming field, uh, the jamming field flotilla, so that uh, enemy squadrons are going to have to take a little bit longer to bring them down. Now, the downside to that, obviously, is that uh, jamming field also obstructs counterattack, so it's going to reduce the counterattack power of Troy's uh, squadrons. So that's a bit of an anti-synergy there, unfortunately. It turns out that the jamming field is actually the one uh, on the bottom of the screen. Okay. So the, the jamming field flotilla also has uh, rapid launch bays. So that's why the, you see two YT-1300 sitting on top of the flotilla. So they're basically docked with, uh, with that uh, flotilla. So rapid launch bays is an upgrade that uh, when you activate that ship, if you activate a squadron command with that ship, instead of activating squadrons that are nearby, you can launch uh, a number of squadrons that you have removed from the game at the beginning of the game uh, at distance one of that flotilla. And then they can shoot, but they can't move. So this is an interesting setup by Christian. Um, because Christian had deployment advantage due to the, uh, the amount of squadrons that he had, he was able to see what Troy was able to, to uh, what Troy was doing with his setup. And um, he's pointing his VSD towards the three MC-30s. Now that VSD does have disposable capacitors, so he's uh, he's probably looking to uh, start working on something at long range. The demolisher is also on the other side of that pack of flotilla, so he's trying to create a kill box. So the the flotilla, sorry, the MC-30s can either uh, they can either turn towards the VSD. In which case the the um, the gladiator can approach unmolested, or they turn towards the gladiator and try to take that out first. But that puts them in a horrible position if they're going to want to try to turn back around and back into the center of the board, because chasing the gladiator may effectively mean that they're not going to be able to contribute to the rest of the fight for the next uh, the rest of the game. Now, it looks like what Christian's trying to do is he's going to try to use his, his fighters, backed by Sloan, to uh, take out the flotillas plus, uh, plus Troy's fighters. And then I think uh, he's going to see if that's going to be enough to, to take out. So, sorry, that's going to be enough to win the game. Now, we have to figure out which of the ships is the, uh, the most wanted ships on either side. So it looks like... Christian chose the number three Gazanti to be his most wanted ship, and he's indicated that by putting the red token uh, on the, the base. And then Christian's gone ahead and chosen Mon Mothma, ship number one, to be the, uh, the most wanted ship on Troy's side. So he's, uh, he's shown Troy exactly which ship he's probably going to be going after. Um, that's probably the best ship to go after because it is the one MC-30 in Troy's list that doesn't have uh, a tanky title like Foresight or Admonition, so it's going to be the easiest one to take out. 
So going into the first uh, turn of the game, Troy decides to activate his generic flotilla first, uh, sending it away from the main battle. Now Troy doesn't have any um, he doesn't have any relay abilities on any of his squadrons. So if he's going to be pushing squadrons with that ship, he's going to need to keep it close enough to his squadrons that he can use the squadron command on it. Man, is that ship going to be doing anything meaningful? Is that just an activation? Control. It, yep. like I, I don't know that he's thinking about using it for a lot of squadron. It could be an activation pad because I mean, I think after the first uh, squadron engagement, Troy's, I don't think he's going to have enough squadrons left to push more than two at a time right. uh, because of Christian's overwhelming force. So you're right, it's probably just an activation pad. Uh, Christian takes a nav token on his Gazanti and just moves speed one, which is pretty much the thing that he does in every. Uh, for the first turn. Uh, for every every one of his Gazantes. So it looks like Troy's going to activate his other uh, transport. Right, and this is the one with the with the rapid launch base on them. So yeah, remind me rapid launch base. I mean, I, I I've played Armada. It's been a long time. I'm not in the game anymore, so I might be yeah. asking more questions than usual. So rapid launch base. It's a up, it's an offensive retrofit upgrade. Cost six points, and uh, what you do at the beginning of the game before you deploy any squadrons, or sorry, de before you deploy anything on the board, yeah. you um, you set aside a number of squadrons equal to the squadron value of the rapid launch base ship. So in this case, it's two because yeah. of the flotilla. Then, uh, when you resolve a squadron command with that ship, uh, instead of resolving squadrons normally, you may take a number of squadrons that you set aside. Right. and deploy them at distance one of the ship that has that rapid launch bay. Mm -hmm. They can't move during that activation, mm -hmm. but they can still shoot. So it's kind of like they're docked to that ship, right. and then you can just fire them out of your ship, kind of like a carrier, right? right. And um, the, the reason why you would do that is because, especially with uh, a squadron like the YT-1300, they only have speed two. Right. So they're fairly slow. Yeah. So what rapid launch base allows you to do is it allows a, a faster ship like a GR-75 to get into position and then dump them into the middle right. of a squadron fight. To, and uh, uh, yeah, and he's probably just looking like taking the tanky YTs there yep. to uh, kind of choke up. Well, the YTs aren't heavy, right? Are they? They're not heavy. No, they have escort too. Right. So the the enemy is forced to shoot them first. So yeah, just looking to gum up. Uh, Christian's squadron plans for maybe an extra turn or two. Yeah. Uh, tr now, Troy's Troy's force, I think, is designed to tie up a uh, maybe a much smaller screen, like versus sure. versus a, a list that isn't all in squadrons like Christian's is. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how long the uh, Troy's uh, screen lasts before the Christian squadrons overrun it. So Troy activated his foresight uh, as a second activation. Now he's trying to go around the outside of the board, maybe trying to pincer in the demolisher or forcing the demolisher to also. Yeah, I think that was the admission that he out of the middle of the formation. The fourth side, I think, it was the so if Mon Mothma is the one with the red uh, most wanted okay. token, foresight would be this one. So okay. it was Mothma foresight admonition. I had the numbers backwards. Yeah, I mean we can double check that, but uh, so then Troy moves his admonition and he's been he's been playing lists with MC 30s uh, quite a bit lately so he's this is probably his favorite ship uh, in the game so he's very familiar with the maneuvers and so that's why he was able to execute uh, actually a really cool maneuver like that and not have them overlap each other so Christian interestingly enough despite choosing um, Mon Mothma as the most wanted target, he decides to turn into the center of the board. Now that's a good idea just because uh, with the VSD's wide front arc, what it allows him to do is react to uh, whatever Troy is going to do with his his MC-30. So if he, if he was actually going to go in a straight line towards the, the right side of the board, that would if the MC-30s decide to, to turn away from him, because the VSD is so clumsy, it would be really hard for him to get his front arc back to bear. But if he goes, if he turns into the center of the board and goes straight like the way he's doing, 
um, and and go slow, then it allows him to react to whatever uh, Troy is doing and gives him a bigger field of fire for which to to counter. So now that uh, now that Troy's activated all his ships, uh, Christian gets to decide where his demolisher goes. So that's also a, an advantage for Christian. They both have five ships in their list. And because Christian's a second player, he gets to activate his demo the la uh, as his last activation after Troy's activated all of his ships. So now on to the squadron phase. Uh, Troy's going to try to keep his... Try to keep his squadrons close to the uh, GR-75 that has the rapid launch base and the jamming field on it to take advantage of those jamming fields. So Christian, uh, that red squadron he just moved was Merrick Steel, I believe. Now normally I think you don't want to jump Merrick Steel out in the middle. Like Merrick Steel, in my opinion, is more of a late game piece. And not the not the squadron you want to push out into the middle of the field at the on the very first turn of the game. The reason why he may choose to do that is just because uh, Troy's Troy's fighter contingent isn't as dangerous as uh, isn't as dangerous as say another Sloan Ball or a Weekend Aces list. So uh, he may be a bit more brazen with Merrick Steel in this game. So that's Captain Jonas. Christian is activating. Uh, Captain Jonas actually is a very important piece in a in a list like this, and it's the reason why Christian decided to play with a Gladiator two instead of a Gladiator one. So Parker McClintock says Christian can't do what he just did. He moves his ship, then changes mind, move differently. Yes, if this was a regional or even a store championship, I think he uh, the TO would force him to hold it to hold him to his original movement, but this is a game night kit, it's a casual event, there's only like four people here today, so the um, the uh, the emphasis for today is fly casual, as opposed to uh, you move it and you're stuck with it. So anyway, to complete my uh, previous thought, Captain Jonas uh, pairs well with the GSD-2 because the GSD-2 has a red die uh, on the front and the side arts. And Captain Jonas's ability is uh, whenever a ship is attacking a, another ship that is distance one of Captain Jonas, they can turn any one of their attack dice to a side that has an accuracy. So GSD-1s, while they may have more pure firepower with their black dice, their four black dice out their side arts, because they can't secure accuracies against flotillas, or even against bigger ships with a brace token, they can't lock down the brace or the scatter token, which may make the attack a lot less effective than if you're able to guarantee an accuracy with each attack. So Jonas generally doesn't get into any squadron fights. He tries to stay as far away from the fight as possible. And um, what what a GSD-2 will do, will uh, it'll bank a squadron token so that when it activates, um, as part of its, of its activation, it'll use a squadron token to move Captain Jonas and uh, try to move it to distance one of whatever the ship they want to attack is. Now, Troy moves his A-wing into the center of Christian's squadron ball in an effort to try to uh, keep everything pinned down by engaging them. However, Jonas's second ability is that he has uh, grit. And grit is an ability that says whenever it's engaged by only one squadron, it can still move. So uh, it's a very useful ability, and because grit uh, most of the time is not relevant, uh, the times where it is relevant, the opponent, at least in my experience, uh, forgets that it that squads with grit have grit. Yeah. So I've, I've seen them where they've tried to lock it down with a single squadron, and then they just move away, and they're like, oh, yeah. wait a minute. Looks like it put a little <laughs> damage there on to... Who, what's the red uh, defender? Uh, Merrick Steel. Merrick, okay. Yep. So put a, little, put a little damage on Merrick. Uh, he used his... Um, brace token. Brace token. And, 
Okay, so Troy moves it, that uh, transport off the, the bottom of the screen. Yeah, so that's the naked transport, the activation. The thing that we've determined to be the activation pad, I think. Yeah. Christian measuring distance to to the uh, the MC30. Merrick Steel does have speed five, and actually Merrick Steel also has grit. Does he? So okay. yeah, he's not like, <laughs> he's not able to get out of that. Yeah, get away from the A wing. Okay. Yeah, actually a lot of a lot of the Imperial aces that are played these days have grit. Um, well, maybe not a lot of them, but the ones that are very good at anti ship fire, right. especially. It just, mean, it just makes it so that unless you really inve invest in tying down the screen, you're not going to be able to do it with just a couple ships. Absolutely. Because like even if you even if he did bring a second A wing in here, uh, Christian can potentially deal with one of the A wings to free up some of the critical pieces to move into range exactly. on some of the ships. And this is generally why a bare bones screen hasn't been as popular lately. Uh, just because the, the most popular lists on both the Imperial and the Rebel side these days is a, is a squadron heavy list. And Christian's there just making sure that he's as far away as possible, so even if Troy moves, he may still be in range next round. Okay, so Christian rolls two dice. At least one of them is a crit, the other one went off screen. Can't, yeah. It's not easy to tell what it is. Um, oh, yeah, this, this, this view is not going to really help us either. Well, they both look like two crits. Okay, so yeah, Christian rolled two crits. Uh, then I no, sorry, he rolled a crit and a accuracy. He used the Sloan ability to change it to a uh, sorry to uh, to spend one of Troy's defense tokens, and then Troy used the uh, Mothma's ability to use one of his evade tokens to reroll Merrick Steele's uh, crit die. Yeah, and listening to the table audio, Troy just realized that um, <laughs> those ships had grit, so uh, his uh, squadrons aren't doing the job that he wanted them to do. So Christian is activating Vale and Rudor now. And who must? Oh, he was out yeah, of range. He was out of range. So Vale and Rudor is actually the perfect squadron uh, to use against um, any sort of ships that have counterattack. And the reason for that is Vale and Rudor's ability is. Um, when this sh when the ship you're attacking, sorry, when when a ship is engaged with another uh, squadron, another friendly squadron, sure. it can attack Vale and Ruder. Uh, right. So that includes counterattacks. Yeah. So, and he rolls three black dice. So black dice are very good against and generics. The yeah, the blue is uh, the blue is because of flight controllers. So okay. Christian is using his VSD. Is that four hits? Uh, yeah. Four hits. So that was enough so to take out the A-Wing. A -wing. Yep. Ouch. So that's one A-Wing down, and uh, as mentioned before, because of Vale and ability, Troy wasn't even able to do a counterattack. So he was using the, the shuttle to... Um, now, why yeah. can't I remember the keyword? To relay. Really? And sorry, I was mistaken. It wasn't the VSD. It wasn't Flight Controller. It was Howl Runner adding an extra blue die because oh, of course, it has Swarm. Of course, yeah. 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 Okay, so Troy activates his uh, his GR seventy five number four, and he's done a squadron command with it. And so uh, that GR seventy five has flight commander on it. So what that lets him do is he allows him to activate his squadron command after his move, as opposed to before. And so the combo is you get to move your GR seventy five into position, then use flight commander and rapid launch base to drop the YT thirteen hundreds into position. So this is a really cute combo. I've seen variations where they put B wings instead of, uh, okay, of yeah. YT 1300s, yeah. and you just you just use the GR 75 to jump into in front of the ship and then drop the B wings and use them as kind of like kind of like extra entry anti ship yep. uh, armament for the GR 75. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to get them, you know, close enough to do what he really wants to be able to do here. Like he wants to try to lock Jonas down, I assume, and he's not going to be able to get that close. No, I think I think Jonas is a lost cause, but he's, he I think he's going to... He may want to try to take out uh, Colonel Jendon here, the yeah. shuttle. 
because once Jenden is down, because Christian has uh, spread out his his Gazanti so much, if Jenden dies, then those Gazantis can't push squadrons anymore until they get closer into the fight. But I mean, yeah, the one. Yeah. Uh, the one because the lo lowest on the screen I mean he doesn't really have much of a threat he yep. can turn back into that fight if he really wants to contribute although you know it won't take long for the torpedo frigates to make their way over yep so Troy drops his other uh, YT-1300 but he's not engaging anyone with that I think he maybe wants to uh, put that in the path uh, of admin be able to use it to um, put it in the path of admonition to prevent the, the fighter swarm that's going to be heading that way. Yeah, because if the squad, if the YT-1300 is um, is engaged with any of those squadrons, then that means that they won't be able to shoot at the, uh, the admonition. They'll have to shoot at the YT-1300 instead. But, I mean, all, all Christian has to do is lock down the YT. Yep. It's not going to be able to reposition next turn to can it do what he needs to do. So Christian activated another one of his Gazantes and he did a squadron command. And now he's just deciding which ones to activate. What are the choices do you think he's weighing here? Is it, is it about you know getting rid of the flimsy fighter shield or start uh, working in on the ships? So he uh, he's activating his Gazanti, which means that he's only going to be activating two fighters this turn. Uh, if you want... You probably want to save your VSD activation to activate your fighters because it would allows you to activate the most fighters all at once. Yeah. Which allows you to use the, as many swarm and Hellrunner dice active like addition abilities as possible right. to take out those fighters. And you get the flight controllers as well. And the flight controllers as well. So uh, the Gazanti probably would want to activate um, a squadron that goes after his ships instead of his squadrons. And so that looks like what he's doing. He's, I think he's taking one of his TIE fighters that aren't engaged by the YT-1300. And... Okay, so he's activating Mahler Mithil here. And Mahler Mithil's ability is, uh, after he finishes his movement, every squadron, yeah. enemy squadron he's engaged with takes one damage. So he's going to jump into the middle of... Well, not into the middle, but at least engage the two YT-1300s. So they both take one damage, and uh, now he's going to perform an attack. He's checking to see if he's in range one of Hellrunner, which I believe he is. Yep. So he's going to add a die, but he's also going to remove a die because of Jamming Field. What is the range on Jamming Field? Uh, so distance one to two. So Sloan reroll, he gets an accuracy and two hits. Uh, so that YT-1300 takes two hits. And so yeah, sorry. If the so if a ship is attacking or defending at distance two of jamming field, yeah. uh, the attack is obstructed. Okay. So it's going to apply for a ship that's even if the ship it's uh, so if a ship is at distance two of a jamming field, a squadron rather. Okay. Even if it's attacking a squadron that is outside of the jamming field, because yeah. the ship that is attacking right. is at distance two, it's obstructed. So he didn't, but he. Okay. Yeah, he removed a die, but then he added a die for Hellrunner, so you had three. So he's, he's activating a generic TIE Fighter now, and he's going to attack the same YT-1300. Yeah, and so Hellrunner adds a die, and then Jamifield removes a die. Gets a Swarm reroll. And he gets... Two hits? No, I think the third hit is off screen. So he got three hits oh, wow. there. And so that's what? It's got one hit point left? One, one hull? So it had seven. Right. And it took one from Mahler. It took two. So that's three. And then it took another three. Yeah, so it has one HP yeah. left. And this is where... Uh, this is kind of the anti-synergy coming into play with a jamming field and YT-1300. Yeah. Troy hasn't been able to make a counterattack. Yeah. Because the counterattack is one blue die, but it's obstructed by the jamming field. Right. So Troy activating one of his uh, one of his uh, torpedo frigates. It's a navigate command. 
and he's flacking Mahler, uh, sorry, Merrick Steele, so it's the, uh, I believe that is, there, so. yeah, I believe that's admonition that he's activating. It is. So with no other targets, he's going to, he's going to move his ship, and I think he's, he's, uh, he's I think his objective is he's going to try to thread between the Gazanti and the VSD and maybe try to come around the rear of that ship. Uh, now, the thing is, the VSD hasn't activated yet, and it has disposable capacitors. And I think that's what Troy is checking right now. So he wants to, he wants to just be aware of the, yeah, that when he moves into range of the VSD, he's gonna he's gonna eat a six dice attack from the disposable capacitors. Now, uh, well, it would be bigger than six dice because uh, the Victory Two has quad battery turrets and. It looks like Troy's going at speed three with that admonition, so it would actually be seven dice. Okay, so Troy, Troy, I think realizes that, and instead of uh, instead of trying to get behind um, Christian's gun line, he's going to try to stay uh, out of long range of that of Christian's VSD. So he, he, so he overlaps uh, Mahler Mithil, and so that allows, sorry, not Mahler Mithil, Merrick Steele allows him to reposition it. And uh, Troy measures, and it's just out of long range, looks like. So yeah, that is that range. We have them labeled correctly. Yeah, just out of long range. You know, I suppose I could update the numbers before yeah, we come back. Yeah, I know, to it's, it's going to take some getting used to. So those of you watching in the chat, uh, if you've got any uh, any thoughts about upcoming Wave Seven, uh, if any of you are going to be sad, <laughs> sad about the uh, the yeah, fact that so many big ships are going to be in the meta, or MSU may not be as popular anymore, that sort of thing, let us know. Yeah, I mean, what what do you think is going to be the standout? Like, so oh. So Radis, I've 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 heard a lot of differing opinions on Admiral Radis. Uh, some people think it's just kind of like a clever gimmick; it's not going to be competitive. And other people think that it's the kind of uh, the kind of ability that um, you know, especially with bigger ships that have weak uh, weak arcs, it can really take advantage of jumping a ship into an arc that isn't as strong and like kind of decimating an opponent's backline. So what Admiral Radis does. Uh, this is more for the benefit of Travis than for viewers who probably know what it is. Yeah. Amaraz is, is the new rebel commander that is coming with the Profundity. Yeah, oh, yes, I know. The, the, the uh, yeah. commander from Rogue One, yep. the uh, Montal commander from Rogue One. So at the beginning of the game, you're going to set aside a ship, and <clears throat> at the start of any turn, you can deploy that set aside ship at distance oh. one of any of your ships. That's what oh, attacks. Sorry. Yeah. So that's the last damage on that YT. Yeah, YT's down. Down to one of each. So uh, that would be 13 plus 11, so that's 24 points for for Christian. No, for Christian. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, if only you got points for losing stuff, I think I would win every tournament I was in. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, uh, not yeah, so only Radis, that. Saying. Yeah, so Radis, Radis allows you to jump into the the rear line of a of an opponent's ship line with with a any size ship. So you can even do a big ship. So that's really going to screw up people's deployment uh, and positioning. But what I think the biggest meta changing cards are going to be are what we were talking about early things like strategic advisor and Bail Organa for the Rebels and Governor Price for the Imperials. Because yeah. what those, the two officers, the named officers, Bail Organa and Governor Price do, um, they sort of guarantee that a list can can have a first activation or last activation. Yeah. So Bail Organa guarantees a first activation on one specific turn that you sure. have to name at the start yeah. of the game. 
Governor Price guarantees a last activation on a specific turn. So a lot of these lists that uh, rely on bidding aggressively to gain either first or second player, right. it would be countered by a list that is that has Governor Price or Bill Organa, because if they themselves don't have Price or Organa, they will lose that last or first activation on a critical turn. So I think that's really going to affect the um, the way games play out. So that was moving uh, Jonas right in against the transport? Yeah, so Jonas uh, bombed the side of the transport. Dealt, uh, it dealt one damage, and it looks like Troy didn't use his scatter on that uh, attack. So he's probably afraid that if he uses his scatter here, uh, Christian can activate another squadron. Well, it's not just that. Like, the, isn't the VSD in range? Yes. Oh, yeah. It is in range, but it may be obstructed. Uh, oh, I think that's probably what he was uh, checking for with the ruler before, was seeing whether it was going to be an obstructed shot from the VSD. Yeah, perhaps. I eyeballing it myself, it looked... I can't tell. We should have yeah. paid more attention when they were measuring. Okay, so Christian's activating his Victory Star Destroyer as a squadron command, and he also uh, spends his uh, his disposable capacitors, and that's something you do have to announce at the start of the activation. So he's gonna he's gonna use the squadrons first, and yeah, I think he's looking to try to pick off that other thing. So his first activation is going to be Saber Squadron with a snipe attack. And so it's going to be four dice. Yeah, four dice plus one for flight controllers, plus one for Howl Runner, minus yeah. one for jamming field. Yeah, so it's going to be a five dice attack here with a swarm reroll. So Saber Squadron is amazing in a slow list just because the the pure amount of dice it can throw out with a swarm reroll. Yeah. So there is. Yeah. So yeah. he's just saying we measured Mithil yeah. before. We know he's in range, yeah. so we know his form is going to. Okay, so uh, out of five dice, it looks like he got two damage. So oh. not a great roll. Lucky for Troy. Yeah, bit luck, bit luck for Troy. But again, because of that jamming field, he's not able to counterattack Saber Squadron. So four hull left on that YT, I believe. So this he is wants to get Jenden yeah. in play for uh, activating Merrick next turn. Yeah. Well. So he's going to use Jenden to double tap with Saber. So now, yeah. So now, because you're using uh, Jenden's ability to activate uh, Saber Squadron again, it actually doesn't get the extra die from flight controllers. Okay, fair. Because it's not considered to be activated by... Oh, it's activated by Jenden and it's not... It's being activated the, by Jen. It's attacking yeah. through Jenden, yep. not attacking through the thing. So there's going to be only be four dice attack here. So it looks like another two damage uh, with the Swarm reroll. So... That brings him down to... we've been counting, it's two left. Yeah, so one from Mahler Mythil, plus two damage, plus okay. two damage. So two left, right? So uh, I think those were all the squadrons he had. So uh, he was only able to activate two squadrons through the VSD. So or another one called the. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So now here's a disposable capacitors shot. Yeah. So it's normally six dice, three red, three blue. He adds one for quad battery, removes one for obstruction. Yeah. So he's he's just describing that. So this is the power of Jonas I was talking about. That's why he moved it within range one. Uh, Jonas changes one of his dice into an accuracy. Uh, he rolled a natural accuracy from another uh, one of his dice, and he had he had four damage. So that was enough to kill it from long range, and Troy couldn't do anything about it. So so Jonas Jonas plus a long range ship are really good at killing flotillas, and that that is the power of Jonas. So moving his VSD, he overlaps the station. Doesn't have a damage card on it, though, so he doesn't take the effect. But he does overlap one of his TIE Fighters. Uh, two, I think. Yeah. Both Methyl and... Uh... Yeah. 
so so yeah so Mahler Mithil got overlapped Troy decided to put him on the rear of the VSD which uh, yeah. in my opinion may not be the best move just because that that freed up Mahler Mithil to move again yeah I would leave him touching I mean he's gonna have other things to kill off the YT and free up Mithil to move right. anyway so it's not gonna I don't think it's gonna really matter um, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah you're right Leaguing him there, stay, still engaged with uh, the YT, takes that option off the table, at least for the, the first activation. So Troy's activating Mon Mothma with a nav command using the dial. So it looks like he's trying to box in the, the gladiator. So th this is, yeah, this is uh, Troy's last activation, which means that Christian uh, is going to be activating his demolisher next. But what Troy's trying to do here, he's trying to create a situation where uh, no matter where Christian goes, and he will get his Demolisher shot, so he's going to be able to get a Black Dice shot if he's moving fast enough against any of Troy's two ships there. Um, because Troy is first player, uh, Troy is almost guaranteed, if Christian is going fast enough, to get a Black Dice shot on the next turn. So yeah, Christian is activating. Uh, I can't tell what that command is. I think it was a nav command that Christian dialed in for his demolisher. Now, he either forgot to or elected not to take his first shot uh, before demolish before moving. And it, it may just be because like he, well, at long range against a Mothma Torpedo Frigate, um, you're not really gonna do anything with two red dice or it's very unlikely. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to move and you still have the option of shooting from your front arc at close range with Demolisher if you chose not to fire at long range with it. So he, you said you did say he used the disposable capacitors. He did time. use disposable capacitors. So those are gone now. Yeah. So he did use his, he did decide to do his attack? Yeah. I mean, technically, he's not allowed to... Yeah, he can't measure his movement before Yeah, he, he can't measure his movement before it. Interesting. So he chooses to burn Lando this attack. Same rule, though? Yeah. So, yeah, he's just going to use an evade token to cancel, and then he just takes one, most likely on the front side. So it's, uh, I think there's two shields remaining on the front. Yeah, so generally you wouldn't be able to, um, once you're measuring with your movement, you're in your movement phase, you yes. couldn't go back and do an attack. Yep. As we've said, this is relatively casual right now. Yep. So he, uh, yep, makes his move, it was a speed two move. And uh, it looks like it was beyond uh, range short range, yeah. So he only gets one red die out the side. And it's one hit, and because of uh, Mon Mothma's ability, uh, she can use evade tokens to cancel dice at medium range. So sure. that's what Troy does. Yeah. And so it was... It, it wasn't engaged with anyone, so all it can do is move. So he's moving it to make sure he's engaged with both uh, Jendon and Merrick Steel. But Merrick has crit, so it won't matter. That's right. Uh, he also wants to make sure he's out of flak range of that Gazanti. Grit let you attack at or move, or just move? No, just move. Okay. Yeah. So he, he can't stay there and shoot, but, but he can move out of yeah. engagement range and shoot. I mean, maybe he's hoping... Uh, what is the roll for? I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, that's right. That was the YT who still hadn't activated this turn. Round three now. So it worked out pretty well for Troy not to get the side barrage from uh, from, from the, the Yeah. Well, that was more uh, Christian's doing. Because Christian doesn't want... Oh, yeah. because, because Troy it is goes, going to activate first. Yeah. It... Especially with how tanky uh, uh, MC-30s are. Yes, he would get a side attack. It wouldn't do a lot of significant damage, but then Troy, because he activates first, he would be able to 
Right. Especially with external racks on his MC30, he gets to roll extra dice. So it could it could be a devastating um, first strike by his opponent. Now, w one thing I forgot to mention is he was uh, he didn't actually do a contrary fire, but you'll notice that Christian was rolling uh, three red dice on his first demo attack and then two red dice on his side attack. That's because he was shooting at Mon Mothma, which is the most wanted ship. And the most wanted ship, whenever a most wanted ship is being attacked, you get to add an extra die of the same color that is in the attack pool. Yeah. So Troy looks like he's going to activate his... Uh, his foresight first. He has a nav command, and it looks like it's medium range, uh, and only in the side arc, I think. Yeah, I think so. So the side arc of a of a torpedo frigate has two blue dice. So he's gonna shoot at the rear arc of the demo. Looks like two damage. So Christian has the. He can use uh, any. Yeah. So he can use all three of his defense tokens. Will he, will he have line of sight? I don't know if he has line of sight in the back of the demo. It's, it's hard to tell from this angle, but... Christian's just deciding... Uh, just seeing what else can shoot at that demo before he decides what to do. So he just uh, decides to brace. Yeah, which is gonna, take it in the back. Yeah, he takes one damage, and that's going to bring it down to zero shield on the rear of the demo. So with no other shots, uh, Troy is going to move. And he's probably going to try to move so that he is out of the side arcs of the demo. And looks like speed two, no, speed three. Wow, that's uh, that's really aggressive because that actually puts him right in the side arc oh, yeah, it does. of that demolisher. Now, that ship is Foresight. And what Foresight allows him to do is uh, when he spends a, an evade token, he, lets, he gets to do that effect on two dice and when he gets when he spends a redirect token he gets to redirect to two adjacent zones and foresight is uh probably best paired with mothma yeah. because of the effectiveness of evade uh tokens at close range he's gonna want to wait until uh all all of troy's uh torpedo frigates have activated before he activates the demo i think so this is jonas Moving in again with a squadron activation. He want he wants to stay out of engagement range of that A wing, and so he's going to bomb the front of that. I believe it's uh, admonition. So one damage, and uh, he's just going to take it. Troy's just going to take it on the front. Uh, no, he chooses to redirect it actually. I'm trying to decide what else he's going to activate. I think he has a ton of options, really, just because there's only so much yep. in range of Jandon right now. So he's if he wants to bomb that torpedo, he's going to move out. He's going to have to move a range, yeah. So with grit, he moves to the back of the admonition and then chooses to bomb. So he's going to reroll a crit with Sloan's ability. So he gets a. He gets a hit crit, and then he, with Merrick Steele's ability, he can change uh, any of his dice to a crit. So that's two damage, and Troy's going to redirect from the back to the side. So I believe there's no more shields left on the left side of that MC-30. And, and Merrick Steele is just so good with Sloan. Like, with Sloan, there's, there's pretty much no blank sides for Merrick Steele. Yeah. Like... You, you can guarantee a crit, and what you want to do most of the time is, if you get a crit, you just you just re-roll it to try to fish for an accuracy. So, like, you can even do a thing where if, even if you roll no uh, crits, yeah. you use Merrick Steel's ability to turn it to a crit, then you re-roll it in the hopes of uh, getting an accuracy, and if you don't get an accuracy, mm -hmm. we're getting a hit regardless. Yeah, so, so, looks like uh, it's activating ammunition, firing into the front of number four, one yep. of the Gazantes. Looks like it was maybe two hits, so I expect to scatter. Yeah. Now he's just deciding... Uh, so it looks like he's deep. shooting... Yeah, he's shooting at the back, yeah, and at shoots at Merrick, gets, gets one. one hit. Yeah. And with the, with the threat of um, disposable capacitors gone, 
Troy doesn't need to stay completely out of uh, long range of that BSD anymore. And uh, very smartly deciding to put that rock between himself and the BSD. So even a long range shot is really not going to be able to do much damage. Now Troy might be trying to set up a run against the the most wanted Gazanti, because if he pops that, that's going to be 46 points for Troy because of that most wanted objective token. The problem now though is uh, Troy has lost one of his flotillas, which means that he's actually at uh, a bit of an activation disadvantage now. Parker McCormick says, Sloan has made Empire Squadrons more powerful than Rebels. I agree completely. I think that uh, if you go squadron by squadron, uh, Imperial Squadrons are superior uh, in terms of abilities. Like if you if you look at stuff like Mauler Mythil, Merrick Steel, yeah. those are all just a really good squad. Colonel Jendon is probably... Uh, I want, I want oh, yeah. to say Colonel Jen is probably the best squadron yeah. that came out of the second squadron pack for Imperials. So it's the YT who's yep. able to counterattack this time because no yeah. one did field. And uh, like the YT's off the table. Yeah, and the counterattack was scattered. But yeah, anyway, to complete my thought, the uh, so, so Rebels have good squadrons, but I think by and large they're still better simply because you have Reekin and Gallant Haven. And I think... It's because of those two elements that that Rebel Aces are still super competitive. Well, Yavaris too, I guess. Yavaris too is pretty yeah. good. But yeah, before before Sloan, I don't think there were a lot of people that were pay playing Tie Swarms, and I think it's really cool that something as iconic as a large brick of ties is competitive now in Armada right. because of Sloan. This is Saber Squadron, I think. Uh, so yeah, Saber Squadron. He's going to try to snipe the A-Wing. And, and Saber Squadron, uh, again, you know, his that snipe ability being very relevant. Right, looks like A-Wing comes off the table. Yeah, so that was four hits, two accuracies. Uh, four hits enough to take out a full health A wing. So that's another eleven points. You've already done a damage, I think, before. Yeah. With the oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so this looks like a a rear. So from the front to the rear of of admonition, and they're just Still trying to yeah, trying to see if it's obstructed. Just trying to make sure I think he has a lot of sight. Yeah. Like, looks like it might be coming over the other uh, hull zone, but... So this is going to roll to see if it's obstructed. Okay. It, it was so close no, because... It's, it's definitely obstructed. Oh, yeah. Sorry, if the line of sight was blocked yeah. from yellow dot to yellow dot. So they're they're chain, they're they're chain he's shooting at the side now. Uh... Jonas changed one of the blue dice into an, oh, sorry, red dice red into an blue. accuracy. Yeah. And he added a blue dice too because of uh, quad battery turrets. So it looks like a hit, hit accuracy. <laughs> uh, Christian pointing out that Jonas isn't actually that great against uh, shrimps, so called shrimps, MC30s, just because they have so many redundant defense tokens. Right. Um, that you can you can accuracy one and they'll just use the other. Well, I mean that ships are. He'd already used um, two redirects against the the fighters. Yep. So it looks like what Troy did. He used an evade token and then he burned a redirect with admonition's ability to cancel the other guy. Fair. Runs over the fighter. Yeah. So, so so far, Chris, uh, this game has been going the way I think Christian wanted it to go, which was he used his fighters uh, to just clean up Troy's fighters, get some points that way, 
kill the flotilla, the rapid launch bay flotilla, and now he's going to try to kill at least one torpedo frigate. That's probably going to put him at, even if he loses a, a Gazanti or something like that, that's probably going to put him at an 8-3 victory or a 7-4 or a at the very least. So in, in order for Troy to come back or even win this game, uh, his torpedo frigate is going to need to take out Demo, and Admonition is probably going to need to take out the the most wanted Gazanti as well. So those two need to go down, I think, in order for Troy to win. So Christian is now deciding to activate his Demolisher. Uh, it's safe for him to do so now that... Uh, the two other torpedo frigates have activated, and he can move out of range of the black dice of Troy's uh, Mon Mothma ship. So now Christian's deciding whether or not he wants to make his side arc shot, whether or not it's actually going to matter. Okay, so he will take that side arc shot against the front of that uh, that MC-30. So Troy spent an evade to make him reroll a hit crit. So it turns out it's three damage. And because yeah, because of foresight, he also rerolls another damage. So he actually got rid of uh, Christian. It looks like Christian rolled two crits there, but foresight's uh, title allowed him to use the evade token to reroll both of those, and they turned up no crit. So uh, Christian wasn't able to proc the APTs. Right. So Christian currently at speed 2 with that demo. Uh, maybe trying to see if he can go to speed 3 and try to catch Admonition in the rear. I don't think it's got enough juice to get there. No, I, if, if the demo is uh, beyond uh, range ruler 4, I believe, of a ship, if it's going speed three, then it won't be able to get into close range. So I think the best the best bet for Christian is to turn around and try to come up against Mamatma in the rear. But uh, the problem is because if he tries to chase after Admonition, he's because Troy is able to activate first in the following turn, he's not going to be able to catch it. So now, now Christian is just checking to see if he can actually get within close range to make a front front arc black dice shot. Uh, Christian, Christian is lamenting uh, that the, the demo is just a little too slow to catch the admonition. Did we get second? No. Did you just send us an invite? We had a lot of success. How many? Almost 600. Oh, really? I thought we only had like a few. So he makes his move and then he's going to just check again. So firing two reds at the rear of Admonition. Doesn't look like he hit anything. I don't know if Mon Mothma is going to be able to avoid this. So it looks like she overlaps the, the rock there. Yeah. Tries to adjust, make sure that she gets both arcs on the gladiator. So now Troy has to choose one hull zone to take all the damage uh, from that overlapping the asteroid, which is two damage. So he takes two in the rear. Uh, and just looking from the overhead display, it does look like he, he's going to be able to get a short range black dice shot, maybe even a double arc I, I black so. dice I shot against uh, Christian Strength movement turn. at the last minute. Yeah. And yes, we realized that he put the pegs in. Yeah. He shouldn't be able to change the range ruler. Flying yeah. casual here. So, uh, I mean, I think, I think that's worth it. 
You take the two damage and you get Demolisher off well, the he has, board. He has no way to avoid yeah. taking that damage. So, so now in hindsight, actually, I, I think Christian should have waited until Troy moved his Mon Mothma before moving his Demolisher because then uh, Troy wouldn't have been able to react to the Demolisher's oh, movement. Oh, the actual position? Yeah. I mean, I think what Troy was trying to do, or what Christian, I think maybe the reason why Christian moved his uh, demo first is that if he moved his other Gazantes first, it might have gotten in the way of Demolish from moving there. Absolutely. But now that's kind of, you know, it's turned out that it may not be for the best. Well, and it may also be like that Gazanti movement, it may have put it in range of uh, Mon Mothma to take a pot shot. Yeah. Uh, before she moved. All right, so that's uh, Christian did a squad command. TIE Fighter went and shot at the back of the ammunition, uh, rolled an accuracy, and then with Sloan's ability, spent one of his redirects. Okay, so uh, with the second activation, we'll take the same rear shot again against that Torpedo Frigate. Yeah, so he rolls another accuracy, and now he spends a red redirect. So that's a redirect to gone on admonition. <laughs> so now, now Christian's trying to see if he can shoot. Uh, yeah, I think it was number four that activated. So uh, if it is number four, if he's trying to take a side arc shot, it is obstructed. So he doesn't get that one blue die. So now he's got to move. Was he going at speed two? Oh I man, if he was going at speed two, that's... He does have that nav token, so he can't slow down. And I think now he's trying to see if a speed one will even get him anywhere, or if it'll bump into a demo. Yeah, it looks like it fits in there. Yeah, just barely. It is, it is starting to look pretty congested in the middle there. Now, that, that's not necessarily a bad thing for Mon Mothma's... Uh, Torpedo Frigate, because when a non-flotilla overlaps a flotilla, only the flotilla takes damage. Good. The but th and he just needs to make sure the Gladiator's dead. Yeah. Well, not, he's not only that, actually, but if the MC-30 can't move far enough, it's going to stay on that rock. So if it overlaps a flotilla oh, and stays on that rock, it's going to take another two damage. So that, this might actually turn out well for Christian. I mean, if he loses the demo, that's bad still, but... So this is Christian activating his last uh, Gazanti, and this is going to be a squadron command. And I think at this point both redirect tokens are gone from the admonition. Yeah. Oh, uh, are gone? Like discarded? You mean? Yeah, discarded. Because yeah. he spent them using the accuracy results oh, with Sloan's yeah. ability, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I think from early on. Advantage luckily it went Christian's way. I mean, taking out the Gladiator will be pretty big, but there's still a lot of squadrons for Troy to have to survive. So that's uh, two damage with a concentrate fire command, was it? I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure there's anywhere for that. Uh, it's anti to go. Oh, two accuracies. So that was, uh, he was shooting at the Mon Mothma's torpedo frigate because the like, most wanted, he got an extra blue die. But unfortunately, you can't use Sloan's ability with ship attacks. So those accuracies did nothing. So now Christian's going to try to see if he can squeeze in. I don't think he can. No? Maybe the overhead camera can give us a better uh, better idea about that? Uh, no. Yeah, I don't think so. I think even if you do an inside turn... Um, an in do an inside, inside yeah. one-joint turn. And now he's trying to see if he can even accelerate and no, get out of it. Get yeah. So it looks like he's going to bump his own... 
He's going to bump his own flotilla. Or maybe not. Maybe he's just trying to see if he can actually do this maneuver. Yeah, that's not. That's going to bump. Uh, the the back will fishtail. I don't think that's enough. Yeah, the shield dials are going to touch each other. Sure. So I, I don't think, unless there's some way for him to go speed three, I don't think there's any of, way of getting out of this. I mean, it's not the end of the world. These are just naked Gazantes. Uh, but it is unfortunate that they're both going to be taking one damage each here. I mean... If, he does, if uh, Troy's able to take out the Demolisher next turn and he doesn't maintain the activations from the Gazantes, it, it could be a, a tougher slog for, for Christian than it looked. Squadron activations left over, so no. I think it's just going to dials here. Yeah, so we're going to turn four now. Troy most likely going to activate Mon Mothma first. And I think she was going at speed three. I can't I can't recall. I, I don't think she was going. I think she was only going okay. at speed two. So I, I don't know. Even if you kill the Demolisher, I don't know if speed three is going to be able to let you clear the two Gazantes. So while you take out the Demolisher, you just have to be worried about eating that rock again. Yeah. I mean, it's either eat the rock or eat arc from the yeah. BSD, so. Well, the funny thing is, like, eating a side arc from BSD may not be that bad. Because you can at least spend defense tokens against it. You just can't spend defense tokens against a rock. Fair. Tr Troy attacking the demo. Just making sure that he has yeah. both arcs. I couldn't tell what dial it was that Troy revealed, but he said he was spending it. So they're trying to check if, if I think Troy has. Okay. Yeah, so, he definitely. Uh, he's yeah. hitting the back, I think, with both. So he's going to shoot the front to the rear first, and uh, he does have external racks, but he doesn't have to decide to use that until he sees his initial roll. So your ordnance experts first. He only gets two hits, and so it's two damage. Xi sevens only uh, allows. Yeah. So only allows Christian to redirect one damage. So Christian uh, spends a brace and a redirect token to redirect to the to redirect to the right side of the the demolisher, the far side. So now here's the side art to the rear, and now they're just double checking to see if that that is indeed in arc. It doesn't look like it. I mean, it's hard, hard to tell from this angle, but it looks not, like... Not in the rear. Yeah. It, it, it looks like it... It looks like he had yeah. to do front to back and side to side. Yeah. It's determined that he can't shoot the rear arc. So this is going to be a side arc shot. So uh, rolling off screen, but it looks like he's going to spend the external racks here. So it looks like... Actually, wow, this looks like a really good roll. Crit hit, crit hit, hit. Accuracy and a regular hit. Ordnance experts. He rolls a double hit. No, so that's one, two, three, four. That's nine damage that went through, and he accuracy the brace. So that was ex yeah. Yeah. So he's just subtracting the damage from that's going to be absorbed by the shields. Looks like there's five left over, which is exactly how much hull is on a demolisher. And uh, Troy with a really amazing roll that that kind of rescued him there from uh, from having that demolisher survive. So now it comes the uh, unenviable task of trying to escape this box and not eat another dam another two damage from the. Uh, from the rock. Well, now with the gladiator gone, you can slide in front. Uh, yeah, that's true. Oh, no, you can't. I so, was thinking you could slide in front yeah. if you were uh, switching sides. Right. The well, the other thing to keep in mind is that uh, those uh, Gozantes, 
I mean, because because Mon Mothma is the most Can he wanted. Do that move. So he he tried to do a speed two maneuver. Yeah. And when you can't do it, you walk it back. Oh, and if you, you walk overlap? it back, you you can overlap your tool. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I can't tell if he's clipped the rock or not. Oh, he. So it looks like he cleared the rock. So that's at least a bit fortunate for him. Well, it's pretty good. Clears the rock. Does a damage to the. Yeah. His anti. So yeah, despite all that work that Christian did uh, on on Troy's squadrons and his flotilla, with that one ship kill, Troy is now in the lead. And if he can secure that, he if he can secure the kill on the most wanted Gazanti on the, at the start of turn five, after moving admonition number two into position, uh, I think that might just be enough to to secure the lead. He just needs to make sure that Mon Mothma doesn't die from the Gazanti shots this turn. Because not only is he going to be taking, taking fire from the two Gazantis, he's going to be taking fire from the VSD, VSD side arc. And presumably a lot of fighters. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to switch off of admonition or... I mean, I suppose theoretically, Admonition's taken a bunch of damage, a lot of the shields, a lot of the tokens are gone. Yes. So there, there's a chance he can burn Admonition down before it's able to take that shot at the most wanted Gazanti. So right now he's activating Gazanti number five, was a squadron command. Did he have a squadron command? Yeah, with Gazanti number five. Yeah, so, yeah. So Merrick Steele looks like rolled a crit and a hit on the rear of Mon Mothma ship. Troy spending a redirect to move uh, some shields to an adjacent hull. So I, I think Troy just said that was the last of the shields on the side in the rear of Mon Mothma ship. And so there's only shields left right. on the front. He can't move Jendon now, can he? If Jendon is... Well, if Jendon's tied down, he can't, he can't move it. No, no, I just mean... Like, that's a lot of activations he's losing out on if he moves them away. Yes. So, I like, there's nothing to tie him down. It's just a matter of well, wanting to get the activation... Well, I mean, Jendon has a activation range of... Uh, sorry, a relay range of three. Of three? Oh, so man. he can actually... <laughs> relays... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> relays quite ridiculous. <laughs> So it looked like it was another two damage on the rear using the double tap ability of Jendin. Oh right, I forgot about that. Yeah. So I uh, I believe the critical was a critical that said you cannot take a shot at something if it was obstructed. So two damage on a side to side shot. Again, most wanted giving that extra blue die. Yep. So I think after that series of attacks, uh, Troy's admonition has one uh, hull point left. I'm just gonna Mon check that. Not admonition, right? Sorry, not admonition, Mon Mothma ship, yeah. Uh, so just proxying the forward Gazanti. Uh, just maybe uh, trying to see if he can get out of range. Now if he can't actually if he can't actually maneuver out of here. Um, both those Gazantes are actually going to take one more damage, and they already took a damage each from being overlapped. And I can't remember which one got overlapped by Mon Mothma's ship, but that means one of those Gazantes has one hull left. And so if it gets overlapped again by anything, it's just going to go down. So Christian, fortunate... Fortunately, did not bump his Gazanti, so they both live, at least for another activation. So activates Foresight here before... Uh, yeah, I... Four is completely in range. So I think if Four is the one that has two hull on it, yeah, you it activate is. Foresight and you ram it. And you just kill it. With a Torpedo Frigate. Yeah. So it looks like Troy instead elects to activate, yeah, instead elects to activate his admonition, and he's going to flak 
the squadrons. So nothing so far. He's going to concentrate fire, add a die against that squadron. Yeah. So from the back now, flacking again, nothing. And one. Okay, so that was Jonas that just took one damage from Flag. And uh, I don't think Christian has lost any of his squadrons yet. He has not. Yeah. And nor is he likely to, I don't think, because m most of those uh, squadrons have scatter. And. Troy is I just he must not have very much yeah. hull left if he's electing to uh, turn it away rather than turning into that yeah. other. Uh, he, he just might be afraid of the yeah being shot by quad battery turrets and all that. I think it would have been better. I, I think it would have been better for Troy to turn up and maybe try to get into the side arc of the VSD instead of staying in the front arc of it. But it's hard to judge those things, especially when you're so far away already. To get into the side arc alone, it, we would have come into medium range. Yeah, but then you're only... I guess so. I mean, you're still being shot at by with four dice because of quad battery turrets. But theoretically, you have one moth yeah. ability and letting you... Uh, oh, I guess you don't need it at long range. Never mind. So is this the VSD attacking, I think? Yeah, this is the VSD attacking. Uh, side to the front of uh, Mon Mothma ship. So a red and a blue. Now, I, I don't know if you remember to add the... Um, I don't know if you remember to add the most wanted die, because one of those dice, I think, is quad battery turrets. So Victor went over, told him he added the die, rolled a blank, didn't a second. But it's still enough damage to take Mon Mothma off the table. Okay, so Mon Mothma, that is... Uh, so Mon Mothma was worth 115, and then add 63 points to that because of most wanted. So that was a huge, that was a huge coup for uh, for Christian there. And now even if, even if Troy takes out Christian's most wanted ship, I don't think that's enough to bring him back. How much did you say add? 63? Uh, 115 plus 63. So it's suddenly a lot less crowded in there. <laughs> yeah. So now he's activating uh, Foresight. And yeah, I think I think you just want to ram the, the flotilla that had two hull on it. And I think, I think it only that's has what he's hull. going to do, yeah. Well, that's not going to ram. Uh, well, yeah, it, it would be ramming this, right? Because you're ending up. Oh, sure. Right? It's it's hard to tell from this angle, but if you look at the overhead, then oh, I understand. when he puts oh, the but thing just, out, yeah, he wasn't his measurement wasn't not going to ram the back ship. Yeah. Well, it depends because when you uh, when you overlap, you keep walking back until you don't overlap, and then it's the ship that you're closest to yeah. that gets rammed. I think uh, he realized that there was one damage in the back one, so yeah, maybe not. Well, he, I mean, he's still gonna be able to activate first next turn, so he can he can secure the kill then. Well, four hasn't activated yet, so four's still gonna move. Yeah. So the four is the the rear Gazanti. Yeah. So he ran thirteen. Okay. So he, that was the one. That was okay. So that's twenty three points for for Troy. <laughs> So how Troy said he was out of boats, but he forgot number five. Uh, yeah, you still have to activate that ship. <laughs> and so this is this is probably one of the things that Wave Seven is going to uh, perhaps reduce uh, ships that are simply there to pad activations. Yeah. Uh, 
because uh, Troy Troy's ship hasn't really done anything. Sorry, number five, the number five GR seventy five really hasn't done anything other than activate and run away. We could have uh, yeah. the end of this. Yep. This is Jonas attacking the rear of Admonition. That's a hit crit. Oh, no crit. So he just takes one hull. Sorry, that was just a regular hit. It wasn't a hit yeah. crit. One damage. This is number three being activated, I guess? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I believe this is the number three flotilla being activated. So that was his two squadrons, did two damage to Admonition. And now turning hard into the center of board just to avoid getting into close range of Admonition. He's going to activate. Yeah. Christian's ready to go, but we still yeah. got Troy's wandering uh, transport. Well, no, it's preparing to jump to hyperspace. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the Karelian campaign. You can't, no. you can't leave it. More pot shots into the yeah. rear of Admonition. Rolling pretty well, it looks like. Can't have that much hull left. Yeah, and that's... It's, it's what I was saying earlier, right? Like, Troy Troy simply didn't bring enough, enough squadrons to delay Christian's force long enough. Because these Sloan squadrons unmolested, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, re redundant uh, redundant defense tokens do help against Sloan, but you know when when you haven't when the Sloan player has not lost a single one of their squadrons, and now they're all free to start bombing your ships. Eventually, they're just going to overwhelm your defense tokens. So it looked like one hull went on to Foresight there. So hopefully, uh, for regionals in two weeks, we're gonna get some of our American friends come out. Uh, we have some friends in the uh, Buffalo Armada meta. Uh, they mostly play at Dave and Adam's Card World. Uh, guys like Paul and Chris, really hoping that some of those guys come out. Cause it kind of kind of gets boring to play against your meta mates, uh, even at a regionals. And we were down in Michigan at the beginning of December last year. Met some really cool people there. We're gonna hope that some of those guys are interested in coming out to Toronto to play in our regional on February 10th. And of course, that stuff will be live stream uh, at VTTV Live. So be sure to follow and subscribe to us on Twitch and YouTube to uh, keep abreast of when we go live for these, this, and other other events. And of course, you can watch. Uh, previous Armada and X-Wing, Netrunner, Destiny, all that stuff. You can watch all those things sure. on our YouTube channel. Well, I mean, folks that are going to travel for regionals, if you're not going to make regionals, at least think about coming up uh, for Canadian Nationals, which will be happening in March, March 16th through 18th. Um, we'll be running Armada as a two-day event on the Saturday and Sunday. So a chance to get a lot of games in, meet some yep. great players. Uh, we'll be trying to stream as much as we can. Uh, I bring a variety of different games. We haven't finalized our schedule yet, but you want to put the link to the yeah, Nationals well, website in the uh, chat. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so what Troy just did—he popped his reinforced blast doors, and what that allows him to do is at the start of the ship phase, he can discard reinforced blast doors to discard three damage cards from his ship. And he's also going to do reinforced blast doors on his other ship. Yeah. 
sometimes reinforced blast doors is a bit of a crapshoot because uh, in my experience, most of the time, once a ship starts taking hull damage, uh, a ship dies before it has a chance right. to use it at well, the start of the next turn. So, so with with the defensive abilities of Admonition and Foresight, it feels like it's a little bit easier to... Um, it's a little bit easier to manage how much damage you're having, so you can let enough through that the blast doors are going to work out, uh, but not so much that it's going to actually kill your ship. So Troy is going to try to take those squadrons on a bit of a chase. Unfortunately, re relay means that no matter how far he goes, as long as uh, as long as Jen keeps pace with him, um, he can basically activate those squadrons wherever he wants. Well, is Jen in or is Jen back uh, in front of uh, the other Gazanti? Yeah, I don't think Jen is in range of those guys. Or, well, no, at three, maybe he is. Well, what Jenning can do is move and then right. use his second activation to, yeah, that's true. to relay, so. So moving mirror, take another pot shot at uh, Foresight. So takes a damage on Foresight. So that's uh, one hull again, right? Yeah, because he had full hull before. It's another attack from a TIE Fighter. And it looks like a crit, so -roll, yeah. yeah, slug reroll. And accuracy, so. So he can spend a defense token. I'm not even sure if he has defense tokens left to spend at this point. On that, that, well, that the uh, foresight I don't think has taken a lot of Right, it was the thing, the thing that got attacked the least. So... Is it accelerating to... Huh. Speed two now. Yeah, I guess keeping ammunition alive is going to be worth a lot more points than killing that Gazanti. Using a maneuver here, spending the dial. I think your best bet is just to try to take out that. Oh, I guess he's it should the BSD. shooting at the rear of the BSD. That's two hits. He's going to brace and redirect. Yep. I don't think he's feeling too concerned yeah. about his VSD. I mean, more of a symbolic uh, effort, really, than anything yeah. else. They're going to pot shot at Jendon. Yep. Yeah, this game might have been a bit different if uh, Troy decided to dump all on Jendon. I'm not sure if he even had the opportunity to do it, what with uh, Christian's squadron superiority. But now I think he's trying to ram this uh, Byzanti here to try to take it off the board. This, this is turn five. So it's going to be one more turn after it, so this is really going to be one of the last opportunities that Troy has to take out anything. But he does have to be careful of not getting double arced by the BSD if he makes this maneuver. No, 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 no. You can't do that. You can't do that, Troy. No. Nope. Yeah, you gotta. And you can't. Well, what speed was he going at? He's only going at speed four. Four, yeah. Four, he can do that. If he's overlapping at speed four, he can reduce oh, his speed. Oh, he's speed three. Sorry. Yeah, speed three, but then you can't do that, Troy. He knows. Trying to, trying to, trying to decide if he actually fits here. At speed three.
So just realizing this guy actually has two health left, so he's not dying, he still has a health. So he thought he had, uh, he thought he killed the Gazant that overlap, but it, it turned out he only had one damage uh, because he, he had overlapped it before. Oh, not quite. He's activating the VSD so he gets the squadron command. I'm going to send everyone out after admonition. admonition. Or no. I guess not because no, it's probably too far away. Yeah, well, not only that, but like also, you're, that's the target you're going to be able to shoot at with the VSD this turn. Yeah. So you probably have a better chance at dogpiling on that. Is that a cocktail? And if you kill it, it prevents your Gazanti from dying next round. Yep. So hit crit on uh, Foresight. Structural damage? Oh no, not structural damage. If he gets a structural damage. So double tapping then with Jenden. Hit crit, that's the end of the, uh, the Foresight. Barf. We're just talking about whether there's anything else to do. We figure it's run indefinitely, so it's going to be the end of the game. Another 89 points for Christian, so that will be uh, 344 to 107. So I can't remember with that margin. What's the, how many points is that? I think uh, 344 to 107 is a 200 and. 37. 30, 37. So that is most, almost definitely a 9 2. Okay, so 9 2. Yeah. Because I know 300 and above is 10 1. Yeah. And I think 220 and yeah, 2 3, 299 is a. I might be mistaken, right. but pretty so, sure it's a 9, nine 2.